Celebrations at Imola for Bjorn Verdheim in round one of the Formula 3000 Championship. Can anyone beat the Swedish star as the series heads for Spain? Welcome to the programme. This week we're coming to you from the fabulous city of Barcelona. So Bjorn Verdheim won the final race of last season and dominated the first of this one. He's rapidly becoming the man to beat in Formula 3000. The aim uh, has always been uh, the championship in, uh, in my second year. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, it started off well, so we definitely have a good chance and I'm just going to concentrate on doing as well as, as possible uh, during the first couple of races because there are some new drivers in the championship and they are already very quick and they are just going to be get better and better uh, the further the season goes. Well, the Swede has also gone brilliantly in qualifying, starting on pole position in his last two races. The big question was, could he make it a hat-trick here in Spain? Two new faces in the Barcelona pit lane. Alessandro Piccolo has replaced Valerio Scatellati at BCN, while we've lost the underfunded reigning British F3 champ Robbie Kerr. Philip Giebler is the new man at Dembla Avis. We're also missing a whole team. Grand Motorsport didn't look a happy ship at the first race at Imola. The talented Frenchman Nicola Manassian did his best, but the team's withdrawal leaves Brit Gary Paffitt without a drive. Well, for a while, Verdheim was looking good that pole position in the Spanish sunshine. Others were finding the heat a little too hot to handle. Ricardo Sperafico will line up for the race on row two alongside the Belgian Jeffy Van Hoydonk. But a great lap by Giorgio Pantano on a track he loved, not the Swede from the top of the timesheets. Verdheim pushed hard in the dying seconds but was hampered by back markers. First blood to the Italian. We'll have the best of the race action shortly. First, let's join Simon Taylor to see how the Porsches got on in their race. For this second round of the Porsche Super Cup, round one winner Pierre Kaffer qualified on pole ahead of his farm backer teammate Frank Stippler and made a perfect start to lead the mouth-watering grid of 22 identical 400 horsepower Porsches from Stippler, Klaus Graf and Walter Lechner. By way of novelty, they all got through turn one more or less unscathed, with just a few bits of exchanged paint here and there. Australian Alex Davison was working hard to hold off Dutchman Sebastian Bleekemolen, but the real battle was for third place between Graf and Wolf Hensler in the red, white and black Kadak car. Graf and Hensler were side by side in turn 10 as the inevitable contact, but they both fought on. Pierre Caffer was comfortably out in front of all this excitement, but Spanish motorcycle hero Cito Pons, twice world champion on two wheels, was an early retirement. Graf and Hensler were still hard at it, and their battle was taking them closer to second man Stippler. Now we're riding with Luca Ricciatelli as he barges past Alex Sampedri for seventh place. It was Lechner fifth and four-time Super Cup champion Patrick Heisman sixth, from Ricciatelli, who was using all of the track and plenty of dirt. Hensler got outside Graf at turn one. Graf hung on and closed the door in turn two and just held the ensuing slide, while Hensler gathered himself for his next effort. Fifth place was close for two, with Lechner holding off Heisman and Ricciatelli. And the charging Ricciatelli made a wildly optimistic move down the inside at turn one, used Heisman as a brake and got away with it but Heisman was in the dirt. Hensler now tried the inside of Graf at turn seven, and this time he made it stick. 
while further back, the Venezuelan racer Milka Beatriz Duno Oliveira is giving an excellent account of herself, neatly taking Miroslav Konopka in turn one. Hensler, having got his third place at last, was after second man Stippler, and as they went into the final laps, they were nose to tail. Stippler, who ended round one in the gravel, was determined not to throw his points away this time. Despite tremendous pressure, Frank hung on, keeping a careful eye on his mirror to keep the door shut on Hensler. He kept his head and his place. So, as Pierre Kaffer took an unchallenged victory 3.8 seconds up the road, the next two crossed the line almost as one, with Stippler second, Hensler third and Graf fourth. As usual, Kaffer turned himself upside down on the podium while the others anointed him with champagne. So that was the Porsche race, but now the Formula 3000s are assembling on the grid and down there with the drivers is Beverly Turner. I'm here with the man himself now, Giorgio Pantano, on pole position. Second race into the season and you're looking good. Yeah, you know, we have some problem in Imola with the car and uh, after Imola we've been testing for two, three days and we find the problem. I think the team worked very well. Me, I do the best uh, every time and... Uh, here we see the result and I think uh, we are quite in a good position for, for win the race. Giorgio won here last year of course so he knows his way around Barcelona. There's championship leader Bjorn Verdheim, he's second on the grid and the young Czech Yaroslav Yanis, a best ever third row start for him and two guys from the States have qualified well, Beverly's with them. Well, I'm here now with the two American boys. Derek, this is one of your best qualifying positions to date. Are you very happy with today? I am. In fact, uh, I think we really had a good car yesterday and my teammate and I probably could have been further up the grid, but it's one lap here in qualifying and you have to make it work, And uh, but we're happy with eighth. I think we, uh, realistically, we can uh, anything's possible in this race. So. And Townsend in Imola, we saw your first race. That was good from you. You're hoping for a repeat performance? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to be a little further up the grid, I'm sure, like the rest of the pack, but uh, we ran into some problems in qualifying. Um, kind of like 405 traffic in LA it was a bit of a mess so yeah I mean it's great to be here in Spain the tracks really cool I enjoy it uh, it feels like California the weather so like Derek says I mean you just get through the first corner see what happens uh, for sure we're trying to pick some guys off if we can that board says Robbie Kerr but as we know he's not here his seat's been taken by the third American in the race Philip Giebler having his first Formula 3000 race and here's the grid, Pantano and Verheim the front row, then Van Hoydonk, Belgium, and Sparafico of Brazil, Yannick Schroeder, the Frenchman, with Yanis on row three, and concentration there from Verheim the Swede, as the full grid of identical Lola Zytek Formula 3000 set off on their formation lap. We'll be right back for round two of the International Formula 3000 Championship is all in place and ready to go. Giorgio Pantano in the blue colours of Durango, Bjorn Ferdheim in art and red, the lights are on, and Pantano creeping slightly there as the lights go off, but Pantano does get away clean, Ferdheim in second place, Van Hoydonk a little bit slower as they go, pouring down to turn one, Sperafico has moved cleanly into third place, but Pantano able to take a perfect wide line and leave the field into the left hand of his turn two, from here I can see a big cloud of dust down on turn one. Something's happened down there, I don't quite know what. It hasn't affected the front two rows anyway because it's Pantano, Wernheim, Sperafico and Van Hoydonk. That was a glimpse of Yannick Schroeder going slowly at the back of the field. He was on row three and must have been involved in whatever did happen down there at turn one. But Pantano comfortably in front from Wernheim, Sperafico, Van Hoydonk and Toccicello. The marshals trying to move a lot of debris from the ground. I can see one of the Red Bull cars going through with a damaged nose cone. That's Patrick Freisacker, but it's still Pantano the leader from Wernheim, from Sparafico, from Van Hoydonk and Toccicello. Van Hoydonk and Toccicello, the two yellow cars, 
arguing about fourth place ahead of Yanis, who's still there in sixth place, and then it's Liuzzi in seventh. He's made a good start because he started tenth. And look at Verdheim now. Verdheim attacking for the lead. Verdheim looks at the inside as they go down to turn one. The door slammed in his face by Giorgio Pantano, but Bjorn Verdheim, remember he's the winner of the first round, he's the current championship leader. He wants to make this two or indeed three races in a row if you count his victory at the end of last season. Riccardo Sperafico a little bit further back and two cars off at turn one at the start of lap two. That's Philip Giebler, the American in the dark blue car. The other is Pantano's teammate, Raffaello Gianmaria. We see what happened. And as they were side by side into turn two, Gianmaria slammed the door and they locked together and Giebler is out of the race as well. Now look at the start again. You see that little creep from Pantano. We've got no news of any penalty for that. But let's try and see what happened as the cars went four abreast down into turn one. Schroeder, it was who spun, Yannick Schroeder spun and there was a concertina effect behind him involving Townsend Bell, Rob McGuire, Patrick Freisacker and Derek Hill. Now the yellow flags are waving down here at turn one because of the giebler Giamaria moment and that means that Wernheim cannot overtake even if he wants to. He was close enough to have a run down the inside of Pantano that time but the yellow flags were waving because the marshals were still working to move the wreckage from that tangle and we can hear now from both the drivers who were involved he was blocking me all, all, all around the track on the whole lap and then I came down the front straightaway and I was on, around the outside but on the inside for the next corner and he just uh, squeezed me onto the grass but uh, you know that's racing it's, it's a shame it has to go in the first lap it's impossible to overtake uh, in that point uh, because I was inside, uh, he was uh, outside, so in my opinion uh, it's stupid uh, to overtake, to risk uh, to, to finish uh, the, the race after two laps uh, because uh, the race is very long. Always two sides to every racing story, but here's the battle for seventh place. Townsend Bell in the red car at the front of that queue, the other red car behind him, Rob Nagaya, the Vietnamese Australian going well, and Tony Schmidt in the yellow Astromega car right behind him, with Salt Baumgartner and Alessandro Piccolo not very far behind. All of these cars, of course, identical Lola Zytex, and that means they're very closely matched, as indeed Rob Nagaya manages to go inside Townsend Bell, with Tony Schmidt very close indeed as well. Tony Schmidt now trying to go inside Townsend Bell, doesn't quite manage it, but Townsend Bell's car is not handling well. Bell goes wide. Clearly that car is not handling properly. We know that he was involved in that lap one, corner one problem, and that has presumably made the car harder to drive. He's going backwards, but Bjorn Wernheim is doing his very best to go forwards because Pantano still has this lead, but only by one or two lengths at different parts of the circuit. And another spin for Yannick Schroeder. He spun in the middle of the pack on turn one. He's now spun all on his own, keeps the engine running. He's going to rejoin the race as we're back now with the lead battle. Still Pantano holding off third time. That's Vitantonio Liozzi who's running a lap behind. Oh, and a big off there. That must be Alessandro Piccolo. It was Piccolo going very wide. He joins without losing his tenth place. But look at this battle for six. It's Nicholas Chiesa six. It's Rob Nguyen right tucked into his 16 for seven. Nguyen pulls out, gets alongside, gets very late on the brakes, goes ahead. It's Chiesa who locks up his front wheels, leaving his braking late. That gives a little opportunity to Tony Schmidt in the yellow car. But look at Chiesa fighting back. Wonderful Formula 3000 racing here. But into sixth place has gone Rob Nguyen. Tony Schmidt goes past Chiesa now and makes it seventh place for him. Chiesa pushed down to eighth. And right behind Chiesa now it's Zolt Baumgartner in the other red car. Baumgartner in the slipstream, right off the power. Tucks out from under the rear wing of Nicholas Chiesa, gets alongside. He's got the inside line into turn one and he's done it very nicely. Nicholas Chiesa goes from sixth place to ninth place in just about half a lap. This was the overtaking manoeuvre of Rob Nguyen. And these cars are so evenly matched, identical chassis, identical tyres, identical engines, that it's all down to the skill of the driver. You make the tiniest mistake and you'll find you're losing your place. So the bit of a 
mistake there from Guyen, who gets on his braking very late. And once more, we see the leaders with Pantano, if anything, having eased away just a little bit of an advantage over Bjorn Wernheim. As Philipp Giebler's car returns to the paddock, Giebler's Formula 3000 debut lasted barely one lap. And this battle still well and truly joined because Guyen has now got Tony Schmidt challenging very hard. Schmidt looks at the outside and Salt Baumgartner's there. They're side by side, they're wheel to wheel. Guyen has the inside line, holds the pace, but what about turn two? Schmidt comes back, nosing alongside as they go into turn three. But somehow the Vietnamese Australian has held on to that place and now Schmidt is challenged by Salt Baumgartner. Salt Baumgartner alongside Tony Schmidt. Baumgartner has the inside line and now Schmidt is demoted. Wonderful wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. You can never say that overtaking doesn't happen in Formula 3000. Such a great breeding ground for talent for Formula 1. Montoya, Alonso, Justin Wilson, all graduates of Formula 3000. There are our two leaders, Pantano and Ferdheim, still in close company. Toccacello has passed Sperafico out of our sight for third place. But we've had some bad news about Patrick Freisacker caught up in that lap one accident. He's just come out of the medical center. Somebody hit me from behind in the first corner and then I went over somebody and I don't know what's happening exactly. Do you know what exactly you've done to your arm yet or not? No, I have to I fly back home now and I will go to the hospital to take a check there and I don't know what's happening. Well, we can take another look at that accident as Yannick Schroeder spins. Freisacker in the white car is punted into Townsend Bell in the red car. It's a strange injury. Perhaps the steering wheel was spun by the impact and that caught him and damaged his arm. But Ngayen and Baumgartner fighting still for sixth place with Tony Schmidt in the yellow car just behind them. But Salt Baumgartner once more gets alongside Rob Ngayen. Wheel to wheel, so close coming into turn one. Once Sport and Guyan leaves his braking just late enough to hang on to this sixth place. You get points incidentally down to eighth in Formula 3000. It's just like Formula 1, a revised point system for this year. And they've caught up with another red card. That's Ricardo Sparafico ahead of them. He was third. He's been slipping down the order, locking brakes there. And obviously his car is not handling well. And the sixth place battle is queuing up behind him. And Robin Guyan goes down the inside. And in fact, I think they're all going to go by. He keeps well out of their way and concedes that he just can't stay with this sixth place battle, which now becomes the fifth place battle. So Robin Guyan still at the head of that queue, just he is fifth. Zolf Baumgartner is sixth. Tony Schmidt, the yellow car, pushing, pushing hard in seventh place. And Sparafico much, much slower, slipping back into eighth place. We see a replay of Sparafico when he still had that fifth and was trying to hang on. He's going to be very disappointed indeed with this because he was running in third place and of course was in third place in the championship up to the start of today's race. Well, he's made his way back to the pits. Let's hear from him. Yeah, I got a lot of problems on the rear. I don't know what's happened. Look, the tire's not really good, but some, something goes. So Pantano and Wertheim still battling for the lead. Toccacello, Yanis, Nguyen and Baumgartner filling the top six. Then it's Schmidt and Yannick Schroeder, despite those two spins, has fought back into the points. He's in eighth place ahead of Piccolo, Chiesa, Derek Hill and Townsend Bell. But this remains the battle of the race. Still Rob Guyen pushing hard, still Zolt Van Gartner getting almost alongside him on corner after corner. And still the yellow car of Tony Schmidt just hanging back a little bit, waiting to see what happens. This is the penultimate lap now. Points down to eighth place, remember. Precious Formula 3000 points which can all help on this final rung of the ladder on the way to Formula One for all these hopeful drivers. And it's such a genuinely international championship. Robin Guyen, an Australian born in Vietnam, fighting to hold out. Assault Baumgartner from Hungary, they're being chased by Tony Schmidt from Germany. Ahead of them, it's Yanislav Yanis from Czechoslovakia.
seven different nationalities in the top eight of this race but who is going to get this fifth place because Salt Van Gartner is now really putting the pressure on as they come round the long long sweeping right and uh, takes them onto the start finish straight to start their final lap the slipstream very important on this long drag down to turn one and then it's just a matter of who's going to break latest Baumgartner seems to have left it too late to come out of the slipstream in fact he goes one side then he goes the other he does go ahead he leaves his breaking impossibly late locks up slides on the rubber and of course throws away not only his chance of fifth place but also throws away sixth almost comes to a halt and quite how he wasn't hit by uh, Robin Guyon, I will never know. Look how close the back of his car goes to the front of Robin Guyon's car there. Somehow Guyon got past, Tony Schmidt went through there. So it's Guyon fifth and Schmidt now sixth. But here is our leader with the chequered flag almost in sight. Giorgio Pantano won in Barcelona last year. He's going to win this year and score himself 10 lovely points to open his score for 2003. The checkered flag is waiting for him. He's on the final straight. And Giorgio Pantano wins in Barcelona. Bjorn Ferdheim decides to be satisfied with points for second place and a comfortable championship lead. Toccacello third, Yannis fourth. What about this battle for fifth place? Schmidt almost on top of Ngayan as they come into the final corner, but it's going to be Ngayan, surely. It is, they cross the finish line now, and Guyon fifth, Schmidt sixth, and Zolt Baumgartner seventh. And what a great drive by Pantano, he was second in the championship last year. This year, perhaps, he can go one better. Confirmation then of Pantano's victory, Toccacello once again finishing in the top five. While there was no luck at all today for the Americans, with both Hill and Bell finishing outside the top ten. Well, Pantano was understandably ecstatic on the podium, thanking his mechanics by sharing the champagne. So how did his team repay him? With an ice-cold shower. <laughs> Tell me what it was like up there on the podium. Yeah, it was fantastic to see the people, to see my mechanic, to see the team was very happy. It also was a hard race uh, on the first 20 lap. Virdain was uh, very close to me in the, in the first 20 lap and then uh, on the end uh, I just go away for a little bit, it was a little bit relaxing. <laughs> Did you settle for the eight points today? Well, I had to settle for it in the end because uh, we set the car up uh, to really use the advantage of new tyres and uh, the car was really good during the first couple of laps but there was a yellow flag where, I, where it was possible to overtake so I couldn't do anything and then I just got lost grip completely, completely in the rear, in the quick corners so I just had to back off uh, in order to keep the car on the circuit So after two races Bjorn Verdheim has opened up an 8 point lead in the championship from Pantano and Toccacello but there are still 8 races to go so a jubilant Giorgio Pantano leaves Barcelona and heads to Austria for round three of this Formula 3000 championship. We'll be there in two weeks' time. Join us then.